All right. So today we're diving into something uh, pretty cool. Okay. Modular housing systems. Nice. We're going really deep on a system uh, designed by Tim MC Hackar. And I think it might just change the way we think about building homes, especially with, you know, all the headaches we see with traditional construction. Right. Um, we've got a really detailed report on this and it gets into the nitty gritty of the design, uh, why it's so different and how these homes hold up against pretty much anything Mother Nature can throw at them. Yeah, it, it's really fascinating how this system draws inspiration from both the human body and ancient architecture. Yeah. You wouldn't think those two have much in common with modern housing. Yeah. But Sia Hatgar saw the connection. Yeah, I was surprised by that too. Like thinking about the Parthenon and then picturing a modern house built with similar principles. Right. Pretty mind blowing. So how does that actually like translate into a building? So the core of MHS is this uh, really robust frame made from factory fabricated aluminum pieces. Okay. And get this, they bolt together. Oh, wow. No nails. Okay. Huh? Which is part of what makes it so strong and flexible. Hold on, no nails? That's pretty different from how I picture a house being built. Yeah. What's the advantage of that? Well, think of it like this. With traditional construction, everything is pretty much locked in place. Right. But with MHS, you could actually disassemble the entire structure repair or modify it without destroying perfectly good components. Oh. And that's a game changer when it comes to things like renovations, upgrades, or even moving your entire house. Okay. I'm starting to see where the modular part comes in. Yeah. But why aluminum? Isn't that more common in like airplanes or something? Well, aluminum has some incredible properties that make it ideal for building. Okay. Especially when you're thinking about durability and resilience. Okay. For one, its strength to weight ratio is far superior to lumber. Mm. It's also incredibly resistant to corrosion. Right. And you might be surprised to learn it plays a key role in fire resistance. Now that you mention it, I do remember learning that aluminum doesn't actually burn. But how does that work in a house fire? Does the whole thing just stay standing? Well, not exactly. Yeah. But the modular design mm -hmm. helps contain the damage. Okay. Think of it like a series of fire breaks. Okay. If one section is affected, it can be isolated and replaced without compromising the entire structure. Oh, okay. And because aluminum doesn't contribute fuel to the fire, it helps limit the spread. Right. Combine that with things like fire-resistant SIPs for the walls and roof, and you've got a home that stands a much better chance against fire damage. All right, so we're talking strength, flexibility, fire resistance. I'm already impressed. Yeah. But I know the report also goes into how these homes hold up in natural disasters. Yeah. Which I have to admit, I'm really curious about. That's where things get especially interesting. Yeah. This system was designed with some of the toughest scenarios in mind. Mm -hmm. Earthquakes, fires, floods, hurricanes, you name it. Right. And the core principles we've been talking about, the strength of aluminum, the bolted connections, the demountability, all come into play in how these homes can actually withstand those forces. Okay. So walk me through this. Let's say an earthquake hits. Okay. What happens to an MHS home? Does it just crumble like a traditional house? Not at all. Remember how we talked about the flexibility of those bolted connections? Right. Well, in an earthquake, those connections allow the structure to actually flex and move with the tremors, hmm. kind of like a controlled dance with the earth. Okay. That flexibility combined with the inherent strength of the aluminum frame means it's far less likely to suffer catastrophic damage. Mm-hmm. And even if there is damage, it's usually localized to a specific section, which, thanks to the modular design, can be easily replaced. So it's not just about surviving the disaster. It's about making the recovery process easier, too. Exactly. And that same principle applies to other disasters as well. Right. Think about flooding, for example. Yeah. Traditional homes are devastated by water damage. Right. But MHS homes with their aluminum structure and easily replaceable components can be dried out and repaired much more quickly. And in the worst case scenario, you could actually disassemble the house and move it to a safer location. Okay. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's like having a house that can adapt to whatever's thrown at it. It really is a remarkable approach to building, especially when you consider how vulnerable traditional homes are to these kinds of events. It makes you wonder why everyone isn't building with this system already. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer if you live in an area prone to natural disasters. You're right. It does seem like a logical choice in those situations. Yeah. And the advantages go beyond just disaster resilience. Right. We haven't even touched on the sustainability aspects yet, the potential cost savings, or the fact that MHS can be used for a lot more than just houses. Okay, now you've got me really intrigued. Let's dive into that next. Okay. What makes the system so sustainable? Well, for starters, aluminum itself is a highly recyclable material. 
Right. So at the end of its life cycle, an MHS structure can be almost entirely recycled, hmm. significantly reducing waste compared to traditional demolition. But even before that, the demountability factor means you're reusing and repairing components yeah. rather than throwing them away every time you make a change. Right. It's a much more circular approach to building. So it's not just good for the planet. It could actually save people money in the long run, too. Absolutely. Think about the cost of repairs and renovations over the lifetime of a traditional home. Right. With MHS, those costs are potentially much lower. Yeah. Because you're not replacing entire walls or sections, yeah. just the specific components that need attention. That makes a lot of sense. But I have to admit, I'm still a bit skeptical. Sure. It all sounds a bit too good to be true. <laughs> Are there any downsides to this system that we haven't discussed yet? Uh, you know, I've always thought of housing as something pretty static, like it's just stuck in one place. Yeah. But hearing about how adaptable MHS is has got me thinking about how that could change things way beyond just the construction itself. That's a really interesting point. It's not just about the house. It's about how that house fits into a larger system. Exactly. Like, imagine how this could impact things like transportation, energy use, even how we respond to natural disasters. Yeah, let's dive into that. Mm. Think about commuting, for example. Okay. If more people have homes that can be easily relocated, they might not be tied to living close to their jobs. Mm. That could potentially ease traffic congestion and even lead to more efficient urban planning. It's like the whole idea of location, location, location becomes less of a deciding factor. If your house can literally move with it, you can get a, a lot more freedom. Right. And what about energy consumption? Right. We've already talked about the potential for reduced waste in construction and renovation. Yeah. But the homes themselves are designed for energy efficiency. No. Using those SIPs for the walls and roof means better insulation less reliance on heating and cooling systems, and ultimately a lower carbon footprint. So it's not just about being adaptable, it's about being more sustainable on multiple levels. Exactly. And when you think about disaster relief, yeah. the ability to quickly deploy prefabricated MHS shelters to areas hit by hurricanes or earthquakes could be a game changer. Yeah. Instead of temporary tents, people could have safe, durable housing up and running in a fraction of the time. All of this sounds incredible. Yeah. But I have to wonder, what are the challenges in scaling up a system like this to really make a difference? We talked about some potential downsides, but even if those are addressed, how do you get from this being a niche thing to something that's actually changing the way we build on a large scale? Well, there are a few key hurdles right now. Mm -hmm. MHS is still a relatively small player in the construction market. Okay. To truly go mainstream, there needs to be significant investment in manufacturing and distribution. So it's not just about having a great idea. It's about having the infrastructure to actually produce and deliver these homes on a large scale. Exactly. And there's also the need for skilled labor. Right. MHS construction requires a different skill set than traditional building. Right. So there's a need for training and education to create a workforce that can build these homes efficiently. Okay. That makes sense. So it's a combination of manufacturing capacity, distribution networks, and a skilled workforce. Right. What else do you think needs to happen for MHS to really take off? Well, I think awareness and education are key. Okay. People need to understand the benefits of this system, not just in terms of disaster resilience, but also in terms of sustainability, affordability, and adaptability. Right. Right now, it's still a bit of a mystery to a lot of people. You know, speaking of the technical side of things, I'm still curious about the actual assembly process. Sure. We've talked about the components, but how do they all come together to create a finished house? Is it like a giant Lego set? In a way, yes. Imagine a truck pulling up to your building site with all these neatly packaged MHS components, each one numbered and with detailed instructions. Oh, wow. It's kind of like those flat pack furniture deliveries, but on a much grander scale. So theoretically, I could uh, assemble my own MHS home. Well, in theory, maybe. Yeah. But I definitely recommend leaving it to the professionals unless you have some serious con construction experience. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. But even with skilled labor, I'm guessing it's still a lot faster than traditional building methods. Absolutely. Because the components are prefabricated and designed to fit together precisely. You're essentially bolting together pre-engineered sections rather than building from scratch. Right. The report mentions that MHS homes can be assembled in a fraction of the time it takes to build a comparable stick-built house. That's pretty amazing. But what about customization? Sure. We've talked about how adaptable the system is, but... How much freedom do you really have in terms of design and layout? That's where it gets really interesting. While MHS does rely on standardized components, 
there's a surprising amount of flexibility within that framework. Okay, give me some examples. Can you change the exterior look? What about the interior layout? Well, for the exterior, you have a variety of options for finishes from traditional siding to more modern metal panels. Okay. And for the interior, because the walls are non-load bearing, you can actually configure the space in pretty much any way you want. Yeah. Open floor plans, extra rooms, moving walls. It's all possible. So it's like having a blank canvas, but with the added benefit of a super strong pre-engineered structure. Exactly. And because the system is so adaptable, you can even make changes down the line without major renovations. Yeah. Want to add a sunroom? No problem. Wow. Need an extra bedroom? Go for it. Yeah. Your home can literally evolve with your needs. This is making me rethink everything I thought I knew about housing. It's like taking the best aspects of traditional, building the strength, the durability, and combining them with the flexibility and customization of modern design. It really is a brilliant approach, and I think it has the potential to address so many of the challenges we face with housing today, from affordability to sustainability to disaster resilience. And what about those downsides we were talking about earlier? And I know nothing is perfect, so I'm curious how those potential challenges might play out as MHS becomes more widespread. You're right. There are always things to consider. And I I think one of the biggest concerns is the potential impact on traditional construction jobs. Mm -hmm. If MHS becomes the dominant building method, what happens to all the carpenters, electricians, plumbers who rely on those jobs? That's a valid concern. It's one thing to create a new and innovative system. But we have to think about the potential consequences for people whose livelihoods are tied to the existing system. Absolutely. It's not about simply replacing one system with another. It's about creating a transition that works for everyone. Right. And I think part of that involves recognizing that MHS construction requires a different skill set. It's not about eliminating jobs. It's about adapting to a changing industry and investing in training programs that equip workers with the skills needed for this new type of construction. So instead of seeing it as a threat, we need to view it as an opportunity to create new jobs and new pathways for people in the construction industry. Exactly. And I think there's also a need to address concerns about potential monopolies. Right. If a few large companies control the production of MHS components that could stifle innovation and drive up prices. So how do you prevent that from happening? How do you ensure that MHS remains accessible and affordable for everyone, not just a select few? Well, I think transparency and open source designs are key. Okay. Encouraging competition among manufacturers rather than allowing a few companies to dominate the market would help keep prices in check and foster innovation. That makes sense. It's about creating a level playing field where multiple players can contribute to the development and evolution of this technology. Precisely. And there's also the question of aesthetics. Okay. Some people might argue that all MHS homes will look the same that there's a lack of individuality or architectural diversity. Yeah, I was going to say that doesn't sound right. Yeah. If you can customize the layout and finishes, surely there's room for creativity and individual expression. Absolutely. Not about creating cookie cutter designs. It's about providing a framework, a set of tools that architects and designers can use to create unique and beautiful homes that reflect the personality and preferences of the people who live in them. So it's about shifting the focus from traditional building methods to design innovation within the MHS framework. Right. It's about embracing the possibilities of this technology while still prioritizing aesthetics and individuality. Right. And I think as MHS becomes more widely adopted, we'll see even more creative and innovative uses of the system, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in residential architecture. You know, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive from the technical details to the potential benefits and challenges and even some pretty far out future possibilities. Yeah. But I think what's really striking me is that we're not just talking about a new way to build houses. We're talking about a potential paradigm shift in how we think about housing sustainability and the very future of our communities. I couldn't agree more. It's a really exciting time to be exploring these ideas and to think about how this technology could shape the world we live in. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up part two of our deep dive. Okay. But we're not done yet. We've still got more to explore, including those dream MHS homes we were talking about earlier. So stay tuned for part three, where we'll let our imaginations run wild and envision the future of housing with MHS. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been unpacking modular housing systems and all their potential. And last time we left off with a pretty fun challenge. Yeah, dreaming up our ideal MHS homes. Exactly. So are you ready to share your vision? What kind of MHS masterpiece have you cooked up? All right. So for me, it's all about blurring the lines between indoors and outdoors. Okay. 
I'm picturing a multi-level structure built into a hillside, maybe nestled in a forest. Oh, wow. The main living area would have huge glass walls that slide open to a spacious deck, basically extending the living space right into the trees. Wow, I can practically smell the pine needles from here. That sounds incredible. And since we're talking MHS, I'd want that main level to be super flexible. Okay. You know, one day it's a wide open space for a party. The next day it transforms into a cozy movie night setup. Just reconfigure the modules and boom, instant ambiance change. That's so cool. It's like your house can adapt to your mood. Right. And upstairs I'd have a few smaller modules for more private spaces. Okay. Think bedrooms with balconies overlooking the forest, a quiet reading nook bathed in natural light, maybe even a dedicated meditation space with a retractable roof for stargazing. Okay, that's officially my dream home. Now you've really thought this through. Of course, I'd have to incorporate all those sustainable features we talked about, right. solar panels on the roof, rainwater collection system, maybe even a little greenhouse module for growing fresh veggies year-round. It's like a self-sustaining eco-haven. I love it. What about you? What does your MHS dream home look like? Well, my vision is a little different. I'm drawn to something more minimalist and modern, maybe, with a rooftop terrace overlooking a city skyline. Ooh, urban chic. Exactly. I'm picturing sleek lines, lots of natural light, and smart storage solutions built right into the walls. Nice. Space is always at a premium in a city, so I'd want to maximize every square inch. That makes sense. So it's less about sprawling square footage and more about efficient, intentional design. Exactly. I want a space that feels open and airy, but also super functional. Maybe a module that transforms from a home office to a guest room with just a few adjustments. Love that. And of course, your rooftop terrace would be the perfect spot for entertaining or just escaping the city hustle for a bit. Absolutely. It would be like my own little urban oasis, maybe even with a retractable awning to create shade during the day and a cozy starlit space at night. Okay, you're really selling me on this city living thing. It's not for everyone, but I think MHS can make it a lot more appealing. Imagine being able to customize your space to perfectly suit your urban lifestyle. No more cramped apartments, just adaptable, efficient living. It's really exciting to think about all the possibilities, whether it's a nature retreat or a city sanctuary. And the best part is with MHS, if you ever get tired of one location, you can just pack up your house and move it somewhere else. That's the ultimate freedom, isn't it? Your home becomes an extension of your lifestyle, not a limitation. Exactly. It's not just about building houses. It's about building lives. And you know what's so inspiring about all of this is that we're not just talking about some far-off futuristic concept. This technology exists. Now, it's ready to be implemented to change the way we think about housing. I completely agree, and I think that's a powerful message to leave our listeners with. We have the tools, the knowledge, the innovation to create a future where housing is more adaptable, sustainable, and accessible for everyone. It's up to us to embrace those possibilities and to demand better, smarter, more resilient ways of living. So to everyone listening, let's keep this conversation going. Challenge the status quo, explore new ideas, and imagine the future of housing that you want to see. That's it for this deep dive into modular housing systems, but the exploration doesn't end here. Keep learning, keep questioning, and keep dreaming big. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.